when those IT networks are connected to file sharing services that are used across firewall boundaries, the zero day infects those file servers. The file server reaches out and compromises every other file server it has access to. Hello and welcome to Waterfalls Industrial Security Institute. I'm Andrew Ginter with Waterfall Security Solutions, and today we are working our way through the top 20 cyber attacks on industrial control systems. In this series, we're using the top 20 attacks to compare the strength of two different security postures at a hypothetical water treatment plant. One of the security postures is a classic 2013 vintage software-based security design. The other security posture is that same 2013 system with a single change. We have replaced the ITOT firewall with a single unidirectional security gateway device. The gateway is the only connection between the control system network and any external network like the IT network or beyond the IT network to the internet. The metric that we're using, the ruler that we're using to measure the strength of these two programs is the concept of reliably defeats. We're going through the 20 attacks and asking the question, does each of these two security postures, does either of the security postures reliably defeat the attack? Today's attack is zero day ransomware. In this scenario, uh, we have a nation state actor who has discovered zero day vulnerabilities in a lot of software and has leaked those zero days into the public somehow. This scenario is similar to the one that we saw a few years ago where the shadow brokers broke into what was presumably a United States National Security Agency command and control center and stole a list of zero days and exploits of those zero days. In that scenario, the shadow brokers tried to sell those exploits and failed. And that process took long enough for the vendor or the vendors, many of them, to madly create patches, create security updates, issue those security updates so that people could apply them and hopefully protect themselves. In this scenario, um, the, the bad actor who has discovered the leaked set of zero days has said, well, selling it uh, you know, on the open market didn't work last time. In this scenario, the bad actor has connections with a ransomware organized crime ring and either sells or partners with that organized crime ring to exploit these zero days for which there are no security updates, for which there are no antivirus signatures because nobody has seen this vulnerability before. The malware is planted on dozens of compromised websites simultaneously for download. The, the malware is launched in a phishing campaign targeting millions or tens of millions of email addresses and starts spreading more or less simultaneously. And so the world is sort of blindsided by this. Countless IT networks are infected. This is, in a sense, similar to what happened with WannaCry. Only WannaCry, some of the, the, uh, the targets were already protected because they had applied a security update that Microsoft had produced. Um, a lot of other targets had neglected to apply the update and they were hit by WannaCry. But imagine a WannaCry exploiting a true zero day that nobody was protected from. Countless IT networks are infected and when those IT networks are connected to file sharing services, that are used across firewall boundaries, as we have in our design for our hypothetical water treatment plant. The zero day infects those file servers. It's not that the zero day plants itself on the file server and waits for someone to click on it. It compromises the file server. The file server reaches out and compromises every other file server it has access to. The malware propagates using the zero day through firewalls. Why? Because the firewalls are configured to let people share files from one network to another. This is the point. If you have a debug file coming from the industrial control system that you need to send to a vendor, you need to drag and drop it into a file server that you can reach from the IT network. This is a very common design. In terms of sophistication, this is a very sophisticated attack. It's using a truly unknown zero day that is uh, widely exploitable. 
Uh, it is not terribly sophisticated when it comes to knowledge of the industrial system. This is not an industrial attack specifically. This is a ransomware attack that targets everyone and happens to encrypt all sorts of equipment on an, industri an industrial control system, in a sense, by accident. You know, it wanted to encrypt everything it could, and so it found some of this equipment and, and encrypted it. In terms of consequences, we will almost certainly see a shutdown of the physical process. If the shutdown in some industries happens too fast or too suddenly, we might see physical damage to physical equipment because emergency shutdowns are very stressful on certain kinds of equipment. And so at best, we're going to see you know, a, a day-long shutdown, but a lot of physical processes take much longer to start than they take to shut down. We might see, you know, on average, a five or 10 day shutdown. We might see much longer than that if there's been physical damage and equipment has to be replaced. And now we come to the question, do our two security postures reliably defeat this attack? In the 2013 scenario, the system is designed so that if you're on, you know, a technician is on the industrial network and has a debug file or, you know, a packet capture file or something that they want to hand off to a vendor, you know, three gigabytes of data, they can drag and drop that from their laptop, from whatever engineering workstation they're on, they can drag and drop that to a file sharing machine in the DMZ. Later on, when they're back at their desks, they can uh, access the industrial DMZ from their desks and pull that file so that it can be uploaded to the vendor's website. Which means machines on the IT network have access to the file sharing service in the DMZ and can attack it with this zero day. It means that the file sharing service in, in the DMZ has access to shares throughout the industrial network and can attack those networks and so the attack propagates through these networks. If an antivirus signature is created fast enough and propagated fast enough, it might stop this piece of malware. It is common malware, high volume malware. This is what antivirus is designed to stop. But if the malware hits us before there's an antivirus signature for it, as WannaCry did and compromised a lot of sites, well, then we're compromised. I should mention as well, you know, security updates, security updates, fix known vulnerabilities. This is a zero day. Security updates don't help us. And so the 2013 software-based posture does not reliably defeat this class of attack. Which brings us to our second security posture, the unidirectionally protected industrial network. In the unidirectional scenario, uh, we still have a need to share information from the industrial network routinely out to the IT network. We might still have those same two, three gigabytes of debug data that need to be sent to the vendor. How do we do that? We drag and drop that debug data, that file, into a file server on the industrial network. It's part of the industrial network. The unidirectional gateway is configured to take everything on that file server and send it across to an identical file server on the IT network. Now, when the technician goes back to their desk, they can access that IT-based file server and can pull the, uh, the two, three gigabyte file from the IT-based file server and send it out to the internet if they need to. What happens with uh, this WannaCry-like zero-day exploiting piece of ransomware? Well, it might compromise the IT-based file server if it compromises the IT network. Um, it might even propagate, depending on the nature of the zero day, it might even propagate into the IT-facing CPU in the unidirectional gateway. But even if that happens, there is physically no way for that compromise to propagate back into the industrial network. The unidirectional gateway is physically able to send information in only one direction. It's not physically able to send a copy of the malware into the industrial network. And so the unidirectional gateway reliably defeats this zero-day ransomware. So with this new scenario, here is what our new cyber design basis threat results diagram looks like. And we're going to build on this as we you know, add more and more attacks into this, uh, this 20 attack scenario. That's what I had for you this time. Thank you for joining Waterfalls Industrial Security Institute.